Hey guys, Luke with Luke's Coin Art here. And today I'm going to do just a quick small, uh, probably just a four piece puzzle on a silver quarter. Do a 1961, I got a nice looking one here. I'm going to probably do like a two tone effect to it when we're done. <clears throat> um, kind of like this one here. Do two tones to it. Uh, these are some other pieces that I've done. All my work is done with a jeweler saw and a six slash o blade. This is about six or seven of them in a bunch. Uh, you can see the one on the saw there. And I just use a vise, so everything is done 100% by hand. Um, this is one of my more known pieces, the spider. This one, the spider hasn't been cut out yet, but the edge has been puzzled. This is my uh, 133 piece five ounce quarter. Probably uh, the highlight of the pieces I've done. And then just a few smaller pieces, a 16 piece panda, a 24 piece uh, year of the goat, and then just a general, like a 12 piece I think, silver eagle. I do all different sizes, I do custom orders. Let me know if you want something. Um, basically I'm gonna tape this up real quick and uh, draw a design onto it. So let me set you guys onto something here to where we can check this out and get started. I taped the coin up because A, it protects the coin from my fingerprints which uh, generally I do mostly brilliant uncirculated stuff that hasn't been touched. Pretty much everything I showed you there was brilliant uncirculated except for the Silver Eagle. It had a bunch of scuff marks on the front and it's a friend of mine. He just wanted one cut. Um, so the fingerprints don't matter on this quarter for the most part, but uh, it also adds a lubrication from the slight adhesive that's on this tape. I use a real low adhesive tape, but that helps get the blade cuts a little smoother. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick four piece for you guys. I don't need to do a long extensive video here. Um, I draw all my puzzles onto the coins first in pencil, and I'll go over it in permanent marker so you'll see it a little darker here in just a second. And I don't generally follow my lines per se when I'm cutting. I just use them as guidelines more for telling me what to stay away from and uh, where to start, where to end. So that's the design we're going to go for right there. Just four pieces, super easy. Uh, should just take a few minutes. So let me get this on the vise and set you guys onto camera mount get us as close as we can get without being too much in my way here I need my elbow room I think that should work all right I got my blade ready to go I don't know if I got a good one on here or not the blades are kind of touch and go or uh, touch and go here with these kind of don't know until you get going if you got a good one on there or not well, it looks pretty good Let me 
reflections give me from that glass. Takes a good focus, so I'm kind of just focusing right now, guys. Just want to really make sure that you're keeping the blade as level as possible. You're turning very slowly. If you turn too fast, the blade will definitely snap. Uh, when I first started, I would have already gone through six or eight blades by now. <clears throat> it's a learning process, but you'll get it down eventually if you're trying to do something like this. The startup is super cheap to get into cutting coins. The coins are what cost you the money. The vice, I think, was like 30 bucks, maybe? The saw, you can get a starter set off eBay with a set of starter blades that generally aren't the right size or very good quality, but like 12 bucks. And that's kind of all you need, just a little brush from Home Depot. Um, and then the tape. I can't really think of anything else you need other than goggles. Um, the blades I buy, I honestly just buy the cheaper ones. I buy about a 144 pack, which is, uh, I believe, 12 12 packs. And the cost is around $7 delivered. So it's fairly cheap. So we're through one line here. I'll show you the back side, give you a better idea where we're at. Um, we're going to do this next cut, and then that'll pop the first piece out. And then we'll just have two more cuts after that. I could go all the way through the coin and cut it in half, but it just gives me more to hold on to if I just cut one piece at a time. blades will snap on you when you get first started at this stuff, but once you get it down, you can kind of feel when something's going to happen, or most of the time it's just a surprise and it actually shocks you, but uh, once you figure out how the metal reacts to your blade, you can probably go through a puzzle like this with just the one. I'm sure I'll have a blade snap, but try to go with just the one blade. It's cutting good now. It could dole out any time on me. You can also tell by the sound of the blade what it makes. I like the silence when I'm cutting because I can actually hear what the blade's doing. Um, it's another reason I don't use lubrication. A lot of people do use wax, uh, beeswax, lubrication of some sort. Um, but that kind of takes away from the sound too. Um, it may help a little bit with the cuts, but a lot of them are also not taping their coins, they're just doing a raw coin and you actually need the lubrication so it makes a lot of sense. If I didn't have this tape on here right now it would be very tough to cut. The lubrication helps out a ton, like you, you wouldn't believe what this little bit of tape on here is actually doing for this blade. Um, which is another thing a lot of people that start don't really realize is they need some kind of lubrication. So this piece is cut. It's going to pop out. You can kind of hear it change. And there we go. There's our first piece out of the puzzle right there. So let's go ahead and just set that aside right now. I'm going to brush off the excess metal just so when we do put it together there won't be any extra shavings anywhere. Alright, now we're going to cut this piece off and then we'll just have one more cut after that. We'll just have two cuts total left and we'll be done with this quarter quarter puddle puzzle.
a quarter quarter puzzle. You'll also notice that using different metals, the blades react different. I prefer pure .999 silver or gold. They both cut really nice. This 90% silver, it's not bad, but um, clad kind of sucks when you get down to our current coinage. <clears throat> it's a tough metal to cut. Even when you do like a silver eagle, or not a silver eagle, a Morgan dollar or a peace dollar, the 90% compared to like a silver eagle at .999 is a huge difference in cutting the two. You tend to get more flexibility with the 999. It's easier to cut, it's easier to maneuver the blade. If you need to make a quick, hard turn, like if you're doing a cutout or something, it's very doable. So you can hear the blade change sound when I got close to the edge there. It's just because I was getting close and just the sound it makes. So we're more than halfway through with this cut and then we'll just have one more cut and this will be complete. I will do a quick two-tone look to it off camera. I'll just pause the video and you guys will get to see it all. Um, that process takes a few minutes so I don't need you to stick around watching paint dry basically. It's not what's actually happening but it's uh, basically what you'd be doing is just sitting there and watching nothing happen. So I'm just trying to end where I ended my last cut so everything matches up good. Alright, there's our second piece of the puzzle. And we just have the two left. And that's just one cut down the center. So let's go ahead and knock this out real quick. You also got to know the best way to hold because uh, you really don't want to stop doing your cuts midway through a cut because any angle change of the blade is really definitive when you, uh, when you see it once you're done. So, so it's best to plan ahead and I actually don't have a lot to grab onto here for the way I want to do this. So I think this is the best shot I have. You want to always keep in mind where the blade's going to be so that all the angles can be hit. If I didn't have this on here right, I'd have to stop 20 times, 30 times throughout this cut just to maneuver it. And this one may be tough just because I do have to go straight up. And I don't necessarily have the uh, space to do that here once we turn this corner. I may have to uh, adjust a little bit, but I think we can get around it. Avoided having to move the coin at all on the vise. Worked out perfect. Halfway through with the last cut right now.
can really tell that the blade has changed a lot from the beginning. It's starting to cut a lot. A lot more strokes to get a little bit cut here. And that happens, but we're so close I don't want to change it right now. I'm literally at the last turn right now of the whole puzzle. You also want to make sure you have good lighting. Right now the shadows, if I was trying to follow an exact line, the shadows would really be messing with me, but I have some flexibility on this piece. Alright, we should be done right about now. There we go. Piece three and four are done. There's our third piece. And our fourth piece. Let's go ahead and take off the tape and put this thing together real quick and look at the final product. Like I said, it's a very low adhesive tape, so there's no residual um, adhesive left on the coins when they're done. The only thing you'll really have is just little pieces of silver, so you just dust that off. So that when you do encapsulate it, so this will be the top right piece, the Liberty, the end of the ERTY. This is the LIB. So we've got the LIB ERTY. Liberty, baby. I really love the backs of these quarters too with the eagle. This is the bottom right with the date right underneath in God We Trust. Get in there. <laughs> A super easy puzzle and I can't even put it together. And this is the last piece which will have the right side all right so there we go four piece puzzle and it's all complete I'm going to pause the video do a quick antiquing uh, to two of the pieces probably just two opposite pieces and come back and show you guys the final product Alright, so I went ahead and just antiqued the whole thing. thought it looked kind of funny, not antiqued uh, fully. So this is the back side of the quarter piece puzzle. Let me just try to flip it around here and show you the front side. Alright, there we go. I should have probably polished the front side a little better on a couple of those pieces, but I was more focused on this back side making it look evened out. But there we go, four piece, uh, super easy, easy puzzle. It's no, uh, it's no 133 piece, that's for sure. But it is a puzzle. It is uh, it does show the fundamentals, and that's kind of all I wanted to do here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please subscribe. Thank you.